All right, welcome to Twenty Dollars Chef with special guests. This year we're doing we're gonna start having awesome special guests. You know, gotta throw it in the mix, change it up a little bit, and I'm pretty pumped. Have my first guest, Absolute Savage. I mean, from Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. I mean, yeah. high school superstar, college. I mean, just a blue collar, but just shifty running back for years in the NFL. Uh, obviously, you had uh, two concussions. That, that That's when you retired after. Mm -hmm. Right into the analyst game. 20 strong years. Just killing it with your charm, your wits, and your knowledge of the game. Uh, and now we're on book number two. Not the first one. The nice, second right. one. <laughs> Find a way was the first one. Now we're on brainwashed. And um, thanks for coming doing my show. Thanks for being my first guest. I appreciate it. Dude, I'm actually pumped. This is a cool place you got here. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. It's um, it's a little bit of I, I I'm a little bit of a stoner. That's how I medicate. I'm from California, okay. and uh, we just keep thinking up creative <laughs> shit on a regular basis. And this is where we ended up at. <laughs> That's got creative minds, bro. If we're all yeah. if we're all thinking the same thing. Somebody's not thinking, right? So you yes. think outside. I love it. Yeah. So um, so today we're gonna we're gonna do some cooking. Okay. All right. And, I can't um, wait for that. I actually, prefer, I like cooking. Well, so. before we get to your book, I was gonna let you know what I did was uh, I was thinking about you know so I was thinking about where you're from, what you might want to eat, but then I decided I would just since um, your genetics are absolutely out of control, you've just had super little, you've had super Iron Man style <laughs> Captain America children. I, I, I reached out to Bo oh, and I asked you? him, yeah, and I asked him oh, what, dang. I asked him That's what, cool. by the way, the picture of him doing your pose that many years later. Is that great? Isn't that as great? That is awesome. Greatest Father Day gift ever. When he sent me that, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, like, yeah he's a little more cut up than you better, you got. Well, you, listen, don't, it's okay. Cause I, well, as soon as I got the picture, I said, now, that's what I was trying to be. I go, well, that's exactly what I, I worked so hard to do is what you are. Um, and I asked him, I said, you know, I asked him for, I told him what was going on, that you were coming on the show. And then I said, is there some things that your dad might have made you when you were younger growing up? Oh, cool. Something like that. So he gave me a couple of things. One he said was his absolute favorite was um, some venison deer, deer oh, steaks, which yeah. is kind of a little bit difficult to start locating deer in the city. <laughs> but he said they used to make a flank steak marinated. Marinated in sugar and soy sauce, right. and then with a with a, something to do with lemons and broccoli and some potatoes. Yeah. So that's what I th that's what I got because it's gonna be good dinner. maybe somebody else can maybe this is just a magical meal that right. just creates uh, Captain Americas. <laughs> so I figured that would be um, well, what we should well, do. Cool. I like it, brother. Good yeah. job on the homework. Who do you want really want to read this the most? Families. Families. With, um, families with kids. Um, that's really if you go back and you look at my history. I went to Congress in 2009 and pleaded for them to establish a protocol for all of you sports, 8 to 18. We were doing stuff in the NFL, NHL, and NCAA. We'll oh, shoot, 99% of our, our, our athletes are 8 to 18. Okay, they're not in the pros. They're not yeah. in the college, okay? Um, and we're doing nothing there. So I was adamant about that. I've always been passionate about kids making it better making it safer which all of that has taken place what's unfortunate things have gotten blurred because of a narrative that is wrong uh, a narrative that um, you can't prove with science and that's really what drove me to write the book because when i found out the truth about the science evidence not not the media evidence i thought you know what i'd want to know this if i was one of those parents that didn't have all of the access i had and I was pulling my kids out of an opportunity that could help them and develop them because I was scared to death. Um, when I shouldn't be scared to death, I actually should be more empowered with all of the treatments, therapies, and how we're handling th that injury today versus in fear. So that's really what, what inspired me to really draw, uh, write the book, and it's for really families and, and our youth. And you, do, I mean, this book is, is a serious, there's well over 10, be, uh, like neurosurgeons. Yeah. I mean, you have you have some top people in the field that came together on this. You know, this is what th this is who. Well, you need to know this information. Yeah. I'm telling you this, and that's why I used a lot of neuropathologists. I wasn't going to just listen to one, but that's when it became so disturbing. Is when I went to meet with them individually. They didn't know I was talking to other people, and they all kept saying the same thing. And then I went up to Canada. Yeah. I sat down with Lizzie Hazarati, and I was just blown away with how brilliant that woman was, and to listen to them. And what and they're the scientific community they're the majority yeah that's what's what we're doing is we're hearing one voice and that's out of boston university mm -hmm. and that's an actual travesty that that's happening we have all of these other neuropathologists doing all this amazing research and study have great integrity and nobody's letting their voices out and that's what we need to hear we need to hear all of that and so um that's why i did all that so too that i you know i was skeptical and i want people to be skeptical be skeptical of me Okay, but that's why I created brainwashbook.com. Put the scientific literature on there. Let you read it. 
you go ahead and read it. People will go, oh, you're a denier. I don't, I have decided this. I know what a denier is. A denier is somebody who is unwilling to do their due diligence and read all of the scientific literature before you make a choice or an evaluation. Yeah. Because you can't make an evaluation unless you do that. So if you've made an evaluation off of some news article, you're a denier because that's nothing. That's not the literature that's going to tell you the yeah. truth. It's the science. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited. I just, I just got it yesterday, so it just came in. I'm going to jump on it. Um, and I think, I'm, I'm, you know, and make sure you know, this is, you need to have this information. Uh, the, and you need, you need this perspective from, I mean, the medical field, uh, obviously, with an actual person that's been, this is what their life story is, this is where they got here. It's a serious passion. And, um, you know, we're pumped. And make sure everybody's going out, going to the site and, and taking care of this because they need to know this. I, uh, luckily I was too much of a, I was too much of a bitch to hit hard enough to worry about it, you know, so. <laughs> well, you know what, I'm going to tell you this. Um, that's actually a little misconception we should clear up real quick. People think that you can just have a concussion in athletes and ath- athletics or in activities. Shoot, my son's first bow that you got to know, his first, if you'd ask, hey, when was your first concussion or have you had a concussion? He would say, yeah, and I slipped in a shower. Four days before his first bowl game, he slips in the shower, wow. hits his head. Um, and now he's ineligible to play because he's in the concussion protocol and you have to be there for an, almost an entire week. So he becomes ineligible his freshman year, um, even though he was the backup and he wasn't going to play and wouldn't have played. But even if he had access to it or circumstances would have been in, he still wouldn't have been able to play because his concussion happened. It didn't happen on a football field, but it happened. So therefore you can't go play football. That's pretty, that's pretty intense. And obviously, that's a completely different situation than on anything to do with athletics. Right. And see, if people need to know that that can happen anywhere. You know, yeah. Car accidents, you know, tripping and falling. I mean, geez. It happens all the time. It happens daily, you know, in this city. There's accidents. You fall. You hit your head on stuff. So, you know, don't be uninformed and think it's just, you know, in an athletic arena or even specifically football. 